Hey, it's Lila Mev the Mini Witch. In this video, we're going to talk about how to do OSL with an airbrush and with a paintbrush. So OSL, or object source lighting, is the act of adding a fictional light source to your model. This could be an off-screen light source, for example, the light of the moon, or it could be an on-screen light source, for example, a magical spell effect or a lantern. OSL is a great way to add story and atmosphere to your miniature, but it can be a little bit tricky. Before we get into painting it, let's go over the rules of light. Light is strongest and most saturated at its source. Whatever is generating the light will be the brightest and most intense part of your OSL. The color and the light will then gradually fade off as it moves away from the source. Here we can see on this lovely sweet potato how the intensity and color of our candle changes as the sweet potato moves away from the candle. Light travels in straight lines. Uninterrupted, your light source would have a perfect sphere or halo surrounding the source of the light. That's because each individual ray of light travels in a straight line away from the light source, and each ray can travel the same distance, thus creating a perfectly even halo. A general rule of thumb is that if an area is directly parallel to your light source, the light will hit it more intensely. If the area is perpendicular, it will still be lit, but not as intensely. It is important to note that areas that are blocked from the light will leave a shadow behind them. 3. Light looks brighter if it is surrounded by darkness. Instead of focusing on making brighter areas brighter to create your OSL, work to make the surrounding areas darker to create the illusion of a very bright light. You're not allowed to be up here. All right. Privileges revoked. Cardo, not you too. You are also not allowed up on the table. You have a very bad track record with fire. Four, different surfaces react with light differently. On most materials, the material absorbs light. However, with reflective material like metal and glass, the light will reflect a further distance and more intensely. But no matter the material, the color of the original object will still impact your OSL, especially as you move further away from the source of light. Like we talked about previously. Now that we understand the general principles of light, let's get on to painting. I'm going to paint half of this model with an airbrush and the other half with a paintbrush. First decide what elements of your model are going to be glowing, or where off screen your element will be glowing. Then, looking at your model, remembering that light is going to have that circular halo of where the light emits, see what areas are going to be hit on your miniature. On this model, I'm going yellow to red because I believe it makes for a more interesting OSL effect. As the color falls away from the source, the light is changing into a reddish hue instead of yellow the entire way through. However, you can absolutely do a single color fading on its own if you wish, or any other light to dark color gradation. For this model, my main light source is going to be the swords in each hand. However, I do want there to still be some amount of ambient light so that the rest of it isn't in complete darkness. But I'm still going to paint the miniature darker overall, again to help those flames really stand out. So what that's going to look like is that I'm going to do a full white gray to black zenithal on the sword so that I can get that full highlight shadow gradation, but I'm also going to do a little bit of zenithal highlighting from the top, again, just so that we can still see some of the details of the miniature and it doesn't look like it's in complete darkness. Paintbrush. Now you might think that because you don't have an airbrush, you can't do zenithal highlighting, but that's not true, and I'm going to show you how to apply Zenithal highlights with a paintbrush to better help us understand the OSL that we'll be placing on this model. Painting with Zenithal highlights will also give a solid base for our vibrant colors to appear on later when we start painting our OSL. Next, take a moment to look at your model. Hold it up to your eyes as if your eyes are your light source. 
areas that you can see are going to be hit by light. This is important because if you're working with an airbrush, you don't need to do this step because areas that you can't see or will be blocked from the light are going to be blocked from the spray of an airbrush. But we don't have that luxury since we're doing it with a paintbrush. So you need to consider where you're going to be putting your highlights a lot more seriously when you are using a paintbrush. Looking at this model, I am seeing that the arm is blocking the OSL from the sword. Therefore, the hair that is behind that arm is not going to be colored or lit. I'm also noticing the areas opposite of the raised edges of the pauldron. To begin, paint your entire model black. Next, take a domed brush or flat brush if you don't own a domed brush and dab it into gray paint. I recommend doing this on a dry palette like a plastic lid instead of a wet palette like you see me doing here. This gray should be a 50-50 between black and white, so mix one if you need it. Wipe away the majority of the paint on a paper towel and apply it to your miniature. It's really important to remove the majority of your paint because you don't want to be causing any texture buildup on your zenithal highlighting. Then begin applying paint closer to your light source and then moving away from it. Applying less and less paint as you go. This will give you the gradual fall off of that object source lighting. Since you've already used the majority of your paint, when you first began applying it to your model, as you slowly move away, you're going to be applying less and less paint. If you want to give your model general atmosphere like I want to do, I'm also going to be taking the same gray and applying it from above that same way, starting at the head so that the head will take the majority of my gray paint and then slowly applying less and less as I've traveled down the body of this figure. Once your gray paint is dry, we're going to move on to white. And then I'm doing that same thing where I'm going to gently dry brush my white and blend it into my gray so that it continues that gradual fall off from my light source. Please keep in mind that this type of zenithal highlighting is only a guide. Zenithal highlighting with an airbrush is by far more accurate. So though this is helpful, you will need to rely more heavily on the previous tip about holding your model up to your eyes to see where light would hit. On this project, this is most prevalently seen on the fabric of his tabard that is closest to the light source. Okay, let's get on to the OSL. First, let's lay out my colors. I'm pulling out a range of yellow to orange and red, as well as tan and blue. Tan is the actual color of the fabric, while blue is going to be my shadow color to help contrast the warm tones of my OSL. As red, orange, and yellow tend to be very translucent, I'm adding white to give these colors more opacity. I'll go over these colors later with my true colors to achieve the intensity I'm after. Remember how color and light radiate in a circle. I'm painting the next part of the cloth in a red-tan mixture. Red is my fall-off color, and tan as the original color of the fabric. As I transition from my OSL to my ambient light, I'm adding blue to my red-tan mixture, creating a purplish hue that I blend into my previously applied paint. Then, as a last step, I wet blend over my previously applied pastel paint to create the more intense and vibrant colors I'm after. Later, I decided the purple was a little too intense and added more tan to my mixture and blended the colors together. As I'm painting the armor, remember that metal reflects my OSL and will reflect it in a more true tone of the OSL and less of the color of the object. I'm painting the areas that are parallel from the light source with a white-yellow mixture, and areas perpendicular to the light source a deep gold. Next, I'm edge highlighting the raised edges of the armor with pastel yellow with the plan to apply more saturated yellow later. Then, adding in shadows and alternating dark and light gradations that make metal look metallic. To learn more about NMM, check the videos in my description box.
Lastly, I'm painting the skin. Choosing my primary skin color and then mixing it with gold for the lower parts of the abdomen and then blue to create the muted color for the ambient light that will shine on the chest. And here's the finalized paintbrush OSL. If you're doing this with an airbrush, boy is this going to be easy. Let's start with zenithal highlighting. Begin by painting your model black. I'm going in with my white ink and spraying it on the sword and then hitting that circle of light we talked about before. White ink should be applied very thinly and allowed to dry before applying another coat. To create the most realistic OSL, apply your paint at the same angle your OSL will be hitting the model. Since the sword is down low, I'm going to be spraying at that same angle up towards my model. Then with a very thin layer of white, I'm going to go and do zenithal highlighting from above to give that atmosphere light that I talked about previously in the beginning of this video. Now that my zenithal highlights are added, let's go on to painting the rest of the figure. I'm applying a brown ink via my airbrush over the model. This brown will be the base for my skin tone, but the important thing is just to lie down your base colors. And with my brown applied, I'm going to be using blue ink to add that blue into the shadows. Then I'm taking a moment and quickly painting in the rest of the model. When I'm painting in these colors, I'm not worrying about how the OSL will affect the colors at this time. That will be added later through my airbrush. For right now, I'm painting the true colors of each object. I'm doing a few highlights and shadows, but mostly it's just base work. With all the base layers dry, I'm going to go back in with my airbrush and apply a thin layer of white. This is meant to be very light as we want our original colors to show through. This white is only to act as a base layer for our vibrant inks to show more intensely later. So start slow and add gradually. Next, I'm adding yellow, applying it more intensely at the sword, and less so as I move away from the source of my light in the usual radial pattern. Next, I'm applying a light passive orange at the edges of my circle to make the fall off appear more natural. Lastly, is adding blue ink to reinvigorate those blue shadows to contrast the warm OSL. Next, take a paintbrush and begin adding in and creating those volumes of your OSL. This time around, since we are painting over our colored inks, we do want to paint in colors that match our OSL. Use your OSL as a guide, and if you need to, hold your model up to your face and hold it as if your eyes are your light source. Areas you can't see should be in shadow. As a quick recap, light will show differently depending on if the object is parallel or perpendicular to your source of light, and whether your material reflects or absorbs light will also impact the final appearance. Areas like his torso absorb light and are also further away from the light source, meaning I will paint his chest in a more reddish hue. His armor is gold, metallic, and very close to the light source, so they will be painted in an intense yellow. The airbrush makes things incredibly easy, but you still have to go in by hand and do the work to really help make your model look three-dimensional and realistic. And here is the finished airbrush side of the model. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that it was useful and helpful to you. If you like what I do here, the best way that you can support me is by joining me over on Patreon, where you can become a member of our growing and vibrant community. All the equipment that I use in this video will be listed in the description box down below and are also available under tools on my website. If Patreon isn't your thing, 
please like, subscribe, comment. It means the world to me to hear from you. Otherwise, I hope that you're having a wonderful day and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.